Welcome to Letters from Norway, offering an American perspective from Oslo, with your host, Nick Cameron. Hello, and welcome to Letters from Norway. As usual, I'm here with my wife, and today's episode is I'm going to be talking about uh, life in Oslo as I witnessed it. And this is going to be a very uh, interesting episode, because in the last uh, four and a half years, I've seen and done just about everything you can do here, so I think. There's a lot of stereotypes about Oslo, you know, that it's expensive and it's cold. Both of those are true. It's cold around eight or nine months a year, and it's probably the most expensive place to live in the world. I would say it's up there with Tokyo, could be debatable, or even uh, Manhattan, New York, but it's it's up there. Like with Zurich is another one of those very expensive places. But as I'll discuss in this episode, there are ways around it. And, uh, you know, once you have a network here, it, it's not so bad. In, in the end, the reality of Oslo is uh, what you make of it. There's all sorts of people here. In fact, the city is one-third foreigners, you know, people from other countries. And there's a lot to do in, in just about every area and every interest. You just have to be proactive and look for it. Nothing falls on your lap over here. Eventually, you get used to the cold. You know, 65 degrees uh, after a few years, it takes about two years, I think, starts to feel too too hot even when it's 65 Fahrenheit. And I start even putting on shorts now when it's 50 Fahrenheit. And uh, 55, 60 is about the comfort zone for me. That's what it used, 55, 60 is the 70s and 80s of a few years back. Um, believe me, today, the day of recording, I think we had 75 and I was almost going to get heat stroke. So you, you do adjust. It just takes a little time. So let's start the show, and I'll tell you all about my life in Oslo. Okay, so I'm going to start out this episode by discussing first the places to eat. You know, eating out in Oslo is generally very expensive. But there are some cheaper places like kebab stands, and I even heard rumors about apps where you can book dinner at someone's apartment and you know they'll they'll cook dinner and everything and you know basically charge you for the labor and food and you eat in their dining room so it's like little uber of restaurant type of concept in general in oslo outside you know the very expensive norwegian places and you know these cheap kebab stands you see on the corner and little you know you can buy hot dogs at the 7-eleven for three bucks there is every kind of restaurant here but I'll focus, you know, on the American ones, since this is letters from Norway, an American perspective from Oslo. If you're an American and, you know, you're, you're missing Denny's, you know, you're looking for some Grand Slam breakfast, well, there's the Nighthawk Diner in uh, Grunaloka. But it's not really Denny's in terms of that. It's like, a, you know, I think at Denny's you get a, a pancake, a sausage, and some hash browns for $1.99. The Nighthawk Diner for that same thing is probably going to be 25 bucks, but at least it tastes like Denny's, you know? Uh, it's, you know, so the prices will be very different. Now, here, McDonald's is McDonald's, you know? I mean, McDonald's is everywhere. It probably tastes a little bit better here. I think the meat standards uh, for uh, McDonald's Norway is much higher than probably the rest of the world, but more or less, you still get the runs uh, after going to McDonald's, just like back home, maybe not as bad. They have TGI Fridays here, but it's luxury. It's in right on the Carl Johan, like on the main street of Oslo, like the Fifth Avenue or Michigan Avenue or Rodeo Drive of Norway. So they have like a few TGI Fridays uh, in the in the luxury areas of town. If you take a date to TGI Fridays here in Norway, it's uh, it's a big thing. It's not like in America. It's only for 16-year-olds. Now, if you're missing high-end burgers like you get at Fuddruckers, you know, this American uh, chain of high-end hamburgers. I don't know if all the listeners are familiar with this chain, but they were prominent in the Midwest and down in Texas. It, it would be equivalent to In-N-Out Burger as well. You know, we have those. It's a little bit on the higher end. But uh, we have something called Burger Joint in the Ackerbriga. And these uh, burgers are really good. And they have all kinds of uh, burgers, you know, with guacamole and uh, Canadian bacon and all sorts of stuff. I mean, I, it's, I, I go there all the time. If you want to find me, that's probably one of the places you can find me in Oslo. It's, it's very small and it's very quiet. It's on the waterfront. You know, it's, it's pretty packed. So you've got to be prepared to maybe take that burger with you. And you can, and you can really taste how good this meat is. I mean, you can taste that these cows had a good life and they were eating grass and walking around. 
and it's it's super good. I, I really it's actually my one of my favorites is the burger joint. And if you're a Taco Bell person, you know, looking to go south of the border, well, we have this place called El Camino, but it's a lot better than Taco Bell. The, the ingredients are much fresher and the meat's much better and the service is a hell of a lot better. And it, but of course, it's it's very expensive. I, I generally pay 160 Norwegian crowns for a, you know, a, a bowl, you know, like you get at Chipotle or something, you know, where you put in some meat and some vegetables and some guacamole. You put in, you know, a little bit of extras, you know, like the sour cream and everything. And it, it generally runs about $20, you know, 160 Norwegian. So it's, it's, it's like Taco Bell, but not really. It's just a lot more high end. You know, they, they have a soft taco, you know, one that you would get for 99 cents at Taco Bell. It's like $8. But again, you can't top the fresh vegetables and the top quality meat. And the guacamole is probably even better than I've ever had in America. And this is actually my very personal favorite to eat, place to eat, probably more so than the burger joint because I like the vegetables. If you're missing KFC, Kentucky Fried Chicken, well, we have this new place called the Lucky Bird. And again, it's going to be a lot more expensive, but at least you'll get some of the tastes that you've had before. And they specialize in greasy fried chicken. But of course, their chickens are, you know, Norwegian chickens, you know, which have lived a very good life and eaten, you know, natural food and was slaughtered in the most humane way possible. So, you know, of course you pay for it. You'll you'll pay for it. It's about 50 bucks for two people. It's a lot different than getting a bucket at KFC back in America. And supposedly the owners of this place, from my understanding, were inspired by a trip to the American South you know, bringing back the best greasy chicken they could to Norway. So it's it's one of the places I enjoy eating at as well. So surely in Oslo, you won't starve to death here. But if you maintain your American restaurant habit, you could surely go broke. You, you can't be eating out every day unless, you know, your company is paying for it or you've got a trust fund from the Hamptons. But even you could run that out eating here, you know, on the restaurant scene. All right, moving on. So getting around uh, Norway and the high prices, how to, how to beat the price game here. So if you are here in Norway and you dip, smoke, drink, partake in other pleasurable yet hedonistic activities that are borderline illegal or outright illegal, then you run the risk of going broke. You know, finding deals is both about who you know and having willpower. Now, when I first moved to Oslo, I already started hearing rumors about black markets just from talking to people in the Deli de Luca and the 7-Eleven. You know, you just ask like, hey, the prices are high here. Where do I get a better deal? And they, they'll tell you. There's and all the time in the newspaper, you can read about busts uh, and seizures of cigarettes, alcohol, meat, and even butter. And supposedly, there's one thing in Norway that's cheaper than everywhere else is diapers, like baby diapers. And there's been reverse smuggling cases where people have taken stuff from Norway and smuggled it to, you know, diapers to Lithuania. Supposedly, a, a, a Lithuanians driving a van load of diapers were busted at the border. And they were asked, uh, you know, what are you doing with all the diapers? And they said, the guy said, I have like eight or ten kids. And then I think they let him go, you know, because they couldn't prove him otherwise that that was, you know, his kids were going to use all those diapers. But there's supposedly some diaper trafficking going on here in northern Europe. So a lot of ways you can get around the prices is that friends help each other out, you know, picking stuff up when they're abroad. I always have friends bring me vitamins. You know, whenever my friends go to America and stuff, I always just say, can you get me some vitamins? And it's always below the customs limit, so no one's getting in trouble. And then they have these uh, shopping trips to Sweden. So you can get on a bus and you go to a big uh, shopping mall just over the border. They have all these shopping malls on the, off, on the Swedish border where people go and things are a lot cheaper. It's not so good as it used to be. It used to be the Norwegian crown was like 1.1, 1.2 to the Swedish crown. But now it's, I think, almost the other way around after the oil bust that the Swedish crown has actually gotten a little bit stronger than the Norwegian crown. So you don't hear about this uh, shopping trips to Sweden anymore. But I think still the meat's a lot cheaper in Sweden and dip you know, chewing tobacco. And uh, I think cigarettes are still a lot cheaper in Sweden, but not as much as it used to be. Biggest hack here in Norway that people figure out real quick is something called fin.no. It's like Craigslist or eBay of Norway. And it's basically the universal marketplace for the country. It's um, well-made and easy to use. However, it requires a lot of uh, details 
at registration. And it's only for people who have a Norwegian identity, a Norwegian phone number. You know, they confirm the account by SMS. You know, you have to log in there and uh, using the government systems to get your account to work. But I also actually found fin.no to be a great way to meet people. Every time I've bought something there, you meet somebody and there's a good story. And I've even got a few friends from the site, you know, that I've met, you know, especially in dealing with electronics, you know, and IT stuff, you know, you always uh, make friends in that area. And then you find out the people you're buying and selling with, they actually know people you know. It's so small here in Oslo. So to, just to close off this section, I just want to caveat that I only heard about the shady stuff here, you know, overhearing conversations on the metro and talking to people in the convenience stores, and I don't partake in it. So if you want to bust me for doing something illegal, you won't have any luck. I'm just, you know, broad, rebroadcasting what I hear in the streets. Now I'm going to move on to some fun stuff. Okay, uh, making friends and the Oslo social scene. Norwegians tend to be very quiet and unsocial according to all the books and BS out there. But Oslo is actually one of the easiest places to meet people, whether it be online, walking around, going out and about, standing in a line at the post office or riding the bus. There's always an opportunity to be social. And this is my story on how I made friends in Norway. Everyone has got different approaches, but this is just how you would do it if you were like a middle-aged dude. These are just some examples. I mean, there's many, many other stories. I, I would probably have to fill 10 podcasts, you know, if I told you every story. But I think much of this will be in my book. And I'll talk about the dating scene in the next section, because I think a lot of you are waiting for that. But I wanted to separate first how to make friends and make your tribe before you go out there and do the dating thing, because those are two separate things. And I think it's very important to build your network of friends first before you go out there and try to, you know, pick up girls and stuff. So I began this episode first with giving you the basics of Oslo, you know, how to deal with the weather, how to deal with the prices, you know, how to find some food. And now we're on to making friends. So when I first got to Norway and after I got my job, one of the first things I had to do was go to the uh, UDI. This is the Norwegian uh, Immigration Department. It stands for something in Norwegian. I, I can't remember what it is, but just remember UDI is immigration. You can remember it as Universal Department of Immigration or something like that. And when I was standing in uh, line at the immigration office, you know, showing them my job offer, showing them my identity, you know, uh, to get my work permit, I uh, was standing next to a guy who used to be a member of the French Foreign Legion. He was originally from somewhere in Africa, I think Morocco or someplace like that. Uh, he was an interesting friend. He was a bit of a train wreck and drank a lot, but uh, he was really cool to talk to. I'm not sure what happened to him. I know that uh, he had an overbearing wife who would always censor him at family dinners. You know, he was supposed to be this grateful little African who was just, you know, joyful to be in Norway. And uh, she wouldn't allow him to talk about his life in the French Foreign Legion. And so he used to be really frustrated about that, that he couldn't be himself at the family dinners. But more or less, he wanted to stay in Norway, so he sucked it up, you know, to deal with the social situations. So that was interesting. Already I got some insight into life here, and, you know, we used to hang out. And then during my Norwegian classes, you know, you end up finding out as an American that you get on very well with people from Poland, even more so than people from Britain or Australia. They've already sold out <laughs> in many ways. Most of the British and Australians you meet here in Oslo, they're, you know, very pro-European, very pro-socialist and very touchy and politically correct and sensitive. They're not the American kind or the Anglo-Saxon kind. They're like a different kind. I mean, I do have a few Australian friends who are more free thinking, but generally the most of the ones I have met want to be European. Again, you'll find that the Polish people here are the closest thing to being Americans that you'll find in Norway. The other way you meet people is that there's this website called meetup.com and they have meetups for everything from basket weaving to programming computers to fixing your car to learning, you know, Swahili, you know, they, they have, you know, groups for mothers, groups for, you know, people who want to go to the moon. I mean, it's like everything. So th th that's one of the ways you meet people is the meetup groups and they're free. That's the best thing about it. There's free. There's another group called Internations. They charge a little bit of money, but they have some very nice, well-organized parties. And then there was a group, I don't know if they're still here, it's called It's a Small World. It was like, 
you know, it's it's a small world. It's this thing called like Facebook for millionaires. It was like an invite only social network, and supposedly all the celebrities are on this, and it's like very closed. But they had started up here in Oslo. They had a few parties, but it turned out it was all the same people from Internations. As long as you could pay the money, <laughs> you know, they had just a higher. Only difference was a higher membership fee. So as long as you paid the money, you would find out where the parties are. But anyway, anyone would people were would post those parties on Facebook anyway <laughs> so you, you know if you were smart you just crash the parties you know with that because no one after after a while the person checking the um invite list gets drunk and then, and then they, they, they stop checking you know to see if you paid or not and then you can just crash this party and you know have all kinds of fun the other the other thing too is about making friends here it can be a little hard at time there's a, a lot of uh, seasonal people here. They come for six-month assignments, you know, with their companies, especially the Americans. They come with the oil companies, and they're only here for six months or a year, and they leave. Or there's people, they come here, and it's not what they thought, and they take off. You know, especially a lot of Canadians and Americans, they have this idealistic view of um, of Norway, and then they get over here, and then they get into that first winter, and they disappear. So it's actually really hard to keep friends. You know, you find the really good people uh, have other things to do and they go to another country or something. They're just passing through. I'll say the, some of the best meetups in terms of getting free food is the IT ones, the ones talking about Linux and different technologies, you know, chatbots. There's ones that talk about Java. They generally have a lot of free pizza. They're sponsored. You know, they have sponsors and they want people to come. I don't know, they're promoting a technology or language. So just learn a few phrases about some whatever technology, whether it be Docker or you know, elixir or whatever, and uh, say those words and, you know, take a few slices of pizza and you can eat really well. And they always have like nice lectures with PowerPoints and all the food is spread out in the back and everyone is so enamored by the presentations and no one's really watching the food. So, you know, dig in. Another one of my favorite groups is called the Oslo Writers League. And I go there time to time, you know, to work on my book, you know, to get ideas and read some passages and see how people uh, react. But just mind, bear in mind, the group is mostly liberal people. I mean, there was myself and one guy from Australia who were kind of on the conservative side. But the rest of the group got pretty easily offended, <laughs> you know, but they're, they're fun. I like them all. You know, uh, they, they enjoy, you know, I have to listen to their passages. You know, they write something about uh, whatever, something real liberal, and I have to listen to it. So they have to listen to my conservative stuff. So it's, it's a nice place to push the boundaries. They also have a lot of language meetups where you can practice your Norwegian. I used to go to these things, but you end up just talking about the same stuff, you know, about this is a nice cup of coffee, this is a nice restaurant, wow, those are nice clothes you're wearing. It's really hard to get into deeper conversation. So it can get you to a certain level, but then at some point, you just have to hang out with Norwegians when they're drunk because they're not going to talk to you when they're sober. But then when they're drunk, they end up speaking English to you anyway because they all want to practice their English. So your Norwegian as an American is only going to get to a certain level, and then you're going to always have to switch to English unless you really live in like an isolated community where no one knows English. But if you're here in Oslo, it's it's really tough. The other languages that people really want to learn here in Oslo that I've seen in the meetup groups, believe it or not, is French and Russian. I, I have no idea why, but uh, those are the other popular language meetups. Aside from all these meetup groups, uh, as I've said in a previous podcast, uh, gym and fitness is the other hack to getting in with people here in Norway. You know, whether you join one of these workout groups like that goes running or goes hiking or goes rowing or kayaking, over time you'll make friends with people or just going to the gym at the same time every day. You see the same group of people and eventually you start talking to them and, you know, they spot you for a set and, you know, they invite you out for a beer and it can even lead to a job interview. So that's a very good place is to get into the fitness scene. You know, sports in general, worldwide, always brings the people together on the common interest for the sport, and that always overrides the person's background or language ability. And you're mostly judged on your ability to play the sport. So it's, it's a real great place to get in. And some of the good sporting places here in Oslo is uh, there's two swimming pools. I enjoy swimming a lot. You know, it's a lot easier on the joints. So there's this Frogner uh, swimming pool here right by the Vigelands Park. And then there's the Toyenbad on the other side of town. And it's a huge 50-meter pool that's like 25 feet deep. So you can you can do all kinds of swimming there. It's just absolutely massive. But it's like 15 bucks each time to use it. But it's uh, it's worth it, you know, a few times in the summer when it's hot to go there. And there's a ton of running and bike trails. I used to do a lot of running until I screwed up my knees. 
but you know you can also bike and everyone is into these like ten thousand dollar mountain bikes here in oslo so if you're into that you'll definitely find a lot of friends uh, my favorite gym is one called evo because it's like a self-service gym you just have this key tag and you can get in and out anywhere from 5 to 11 a.m in the morning and it's cheap it's only like 300 norwegian per month per month which is like almost 40 dollars which is cheap in norway it's actually cheap by Manhattan standards, from what I understand as well. Uh, the other place you can make friends, and it starts bordering on the single scene, but this is a good transition to, you know, is nightlife. You know, I could dedicate a whole episode to the nightlife escapades I've experienced here in Oslo, but I'll just uh, cover a, a few places, you know. I, but I can just say that it's, it's scandalous. And it's not too hard to find what you're looking for here in Oslo, especially at 3 a.m. in the morning. All the vampires are out. People are totally smashed. And everyone's in a really good and friendly mood. They probably won't remember you the next day. You'll have some really good conversations, but <laughs> good luck getting a hold of them next day. So your game better be pretty sharp to close on the spot. But uh, these are the places I recommend. There's something called Blue Blow uh, Nightclub. And on Sunday nights, they have free concerts. Uh, it starts, I think, if you get in there before 9 o'clock, it's all free. It's like a, it's a band called uh, the Frank Znort Band or something. I'll put it down on the show notes. But the theme of the concert is called We'll Fuck Up Your Mondays. And this has been one of the longest ongoing shows in Oslo that every Sunday night they've been consistent. They've always been there. And everyone is there. You'll find everyone that you've met you know, in all these other experiences, being on the bus or on the metro and all the people that you've said hello to, you'll find them all there on Sunday night. On Saturday nights, there's this bar called Horgan's over here in Meierstura, nearby where I live on the Bogstadsvayen. It's kind of an American-style bar. It's uh, pretty good. Yeah, everyone's, I've heard, has had pretty good luck over there. And they also have an English comedy night there. There's a meetup group for the English comedy night. And if you're one of these really, really scandalous, corrupt type of people that, uh, you know, have some really expensive habits, then there's this one club called Knox in Soli Place. And if you even just hang out <laughs> and watch who's going in and out of that place, you, you, it's quite a show. So in general, these are the places where you can meet your friends and also meet your future ex-wife. Thank you for listening, and don't forget to subscribe on iTunes and follow us on social media. If you'd like to support our efforts, please visit our page on Patreon.